Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to break tests in JavaScript for Truffle. And while I've showed you on the general JavaScript test in other videos, this will actually go into the ins and outs of some of how Truffle uses it. Um, I'm doing this because I was going to make a video on how to debug in Truffle, but then I realized that it wouldn't make as much sense unless I go over how these JavaScript tests even work in the first place. So let's get started. So if you actually are used to JavaScript, you may have used the testing frameworks um, Mocha and Chai for assertions. Um, if you haven't, there's some links in the description like here and here. Um, so I'll go over those. But essentially, without going to the details of it, you'll see this sort of um, general sort of pattern. Like there's some assert statements. Um, you're going to require a certain thing. Um, you're going to use, instead of describe the contract, which is a syntax in Truffle instead of Mocha. Um, it does mostly the same thing, except that um, if you scroll down here, you'll see that um, it deploys your contracts on the Ethereum client since we're using Ethereum related stuff. Um, it also provides like, a list of accounts. Um, but pretty much it will re redeploy your contracts every time so that you'll have like a fresh state between your test runs. So you don't have to worry about cleaning up um, between runs. That's one of the major um, reasons why I use contract instead of describe. But otherwise, the syntax is pretty much the same. Um, you have this here, and you have some function here, um, which I'll go over later. Um, and then there's some it statements, which you'll see a lot of like here which has some text and then like a string and then a function or a method call and it'll do some testing code. Uh, but that's the general sort of like syntax which you'll copy. So this is in the getting started section, which I'll link. Uh, but this is pretty much repeated a lot in the example test code. And obviously Mocha probably has more complex syntax, but this is just the basis to get started. Uh, I have this link for chai assertions. I think the assertions are pretty much um, the, let's see. Like you'll see a search statements here, and then Chai has some different sections, but I went to the Chai assert se section specifically. Like there's the should expect an assert section, so I went to the assert guide, and you'll just see like these asserts, which are pretty similar to a lot of different programming languages uh, or testing frameworks if you used them before. So I won't go too too deep into that. Um, but okay, so for the JavaScript um section, um yeah, feel free to go to Mocha and Chai more as necessary. Um, but I'll go over a certain project first. So for the example project, I'm going to be using the Truffle uh, Meta Metacoin tutorial that's often used. So I did a Truffle Unbox Metacoin into a folder, did all this, um, and I opened it in Visual Studio Code. So you'll see I have this contract. Um, the main contract that I care about is the Metacoin one, which has the Send Coin. Get balance in Ethereum and get balance. Um, essentially, Metacoin will be like uh, two times or half of Ethereum because there's this conversion factor. Um, but yeah, it's just a fake coin. Um, and then here are the migrations, which, if you were to deploy this on an Ethereum network, you would put all your contracts into these RFS require statements and then you'll deploy them. And then here are the actual tests that are made for you. So there's a JavaScript version, so metacoin.js, and a Solidity version of a test. OK, so we'll focus on the JavaScript version. Um, and then it mentions that this artifact.require is used in tests and in migrations. So normally when you migrate, well, I'll just show you first. So normally, if you want to start doing things, you'll do you'll open a triple develop environments, which will um, Set up a development environment. Also, just set up the Ethereum client with some test accounts. So these ten test accounts. Um, I'm going to compile the code. So I'll do that. Um, so I'll compile these contracts, um, and also run a migration after that, just to show you. you know, I, I showed you many times before. So you do a migrate. It will do these two migration files. So it will require migrations and actually deploy migrations, which is this first contract. And then it'll do require for convert live and metacoin. So those two, um, and it'll actually deploy them. Now uh, she's doing some link thing too, which I haven't seen before. That might be new. Okay. Um, but in the test, you'll see that we're also doing our first require. 
and that will just make our um, contract available for our test. So it's just the same syntax, um, just to use the test. Um, yeah, we've gone over the section before how describe is being replaced by um, contract. Um, yeah, this is our RFX require section, uh, which I just mentioned. Uh, we use Web3, so Web3 is used in normal web apps to get to connect to your Ethereum stuff. So we can use Web3 in our tests. And there's this, you can use like get balance. Uh, I think there's an example in here. Or possibly not. All right. Um, but yeah, and then this is using then statements in a sort of functional programming, which um, might be able to just Google functional programming. Um, I was using functional programming, which is something I've used in Java before, but I just want to see this for example if they have one. Um, yeah, so this is. Uh, function programming example. So you have this array, and then you want to do all the um, sub sub subsequent um, calls in like this dot notation. So instead of like doing these as four different lines, it's all one line. And so you have this array, so you're going to filter the array. And then so this is going to take each element of the array and just call it n. So the first time it'll do one, and it'll do n mod two, which um, it'll check that's equal equals zero. Um, so pretty much it's filtering by the even numbers. So it's taking this array, filter it by the even numbers, um, and then it'll map it. So map is just doing a sort of one, it'll convert the value to another value. So you'll have an array of two, four, six, eight, and ten. And then you'll map it to an array where each of the values is multiplied by ten, so you get 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Um, and you'll do this reduce. I don't really use reduce that much, uh, but it's going to just do another sort of call. But you're doing these conversions, so like the output of one line gets used as the input to the, to the next line in a sense. So like you have this array, you're taking each, each by the array and you're um, doing some your filtering. So now you have a filtered array once you get to the map. And then when you get to the map, you're doing you're multiplying everything by 10. So once you're done with the map, you do reduce, and I'm not really sure what reduce does, the time you use it much, but then you'll do something after that. So you'll use functional programming um, in these sort of so at least in this example over here, there's another example. Um, but yeah, since the example down here doesn't um, use as much functional programming because it uses asyncs. And the reason for that is uh, um, when you have Solidity or Ethereum transactions, uh, which actually change data on the um, Ethereum network, then like you don't get the results immediately and you have to use as A weights. Um, or it's basically asynchronous. So you don't get the return automatically like you do. Like if I did 2 plus 2, you automatically get 4. But in this case, you have to wait a while. Um, so if you ran that in normal lines, um, it wouldn't work properly, so you have to have this sort of like delayed notation. So async and await. Um, but if you're not doing that, then you can do this functional style. I'll just show you. So um, we're using Mocha again. So we're getting the meta coin for RFX require. Um, we're using our contract function here. Which is the same thing as described in Mocha, except that it's for our contracts. So to start, we're deploying our contract to a fresh thing. Uh, we have accounts, which are just the accounts in our um, and these accounts in our network. So these ten accounts, um, and then so we can post it. So we can use that. Okay, so MetaCoin is this variable. We're getting the deployment of it because we've abstracted um, the contract in. Truffle, um, and then so we're taking that deploy contract and we're doing it then, and then we're saying that for that in this deployed instance, uh, we want to call the get balance method, and the get balance method is close this um, right here, so it'll take an address and just return um, the balance for the address since there's this map here, um, so we get the balance. 
Um, I think you have to use this call to actually use it. Um, and then put the address you put in is the first account. So this account over here. Um, and then, so this returns the balance. Um, you'll see that it returns a uint, but yeah, it returns a balance. Um, so since we're doing functional programming, that balance gets put here as, as this variable. And then we're going to do an assert here. And the assert's going to be a, a chai asserts. It's one of these. Um, and we're going to do assert.equal, so we're just checking two things are equal. So this balance variable, we're going to um, use the value of to convert to a right number. And then we're going to say it should equal to 10,000 because on our test network, everything's always 1,000. And then if it doesn't work, you get this error message that 1,000 was in the first account. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a lot, but it goes over all the little pieces that, that goes into this code. Like it's not like that much code, um, but knowing how exact everything works is pretty important. Um, this thing does something similar. So it uses the it again, like Mochi does. Um, it pre-makes these variables. Um, and pretty much it's testing um, get balance and get balance in Ethereum um, because this is all by a factor too since there's a conversion between Metacoin, which is our fake coin, and Ethereum. But it's pretty much testing that like um, if you get the balances that they're correct. Um, so I'm not going to go too deep into that, but you'll see over here it's like two times Metacoin balance because um, Ethereum is two times as valuable as Metacoin in this example. Um, and that's how that works. It uses these variables here just to um, make this a little easier to use. Um, and over here, um, it's testing, I think sending a coin. Yeah, we're using send coin. A send coin is actually using a transaction. So it'll actually, every account starts with 10,000, um, a 10,000 balance. But like this will actually start transferring from one account to other. So you want to verify that the uh, account balances are correct after the transfers. Um, so it's doing that, um, it calls like send coin for account one, and then um, it pretty much like stores them in these starting and ending balances. Um, so like you can go over all that, but it's pretty much the same thing as the first example I went over. It's just a little more long and complicated. And honestly, I don't really like how this is a reading very well. Um, I guess one thing to note is that in our first example, uh, actually no, never mind this. So you'll notice here that like there's this error notation when you're using functional programming, um, this is the variable and this is the code that gets called. If you're using more than one line, you have to use brackets. Um, actually, this is only one line, but it's just nice for syntax. So if you're, it's going to take more than one line, you'll use this bracket notation. So you can call, you can do more complicated um, functions inside your functional programming. Um, so yeah, I will. I've compiled it. I'm gonna run this test, which will actually run all the tests. Um, that takes some time, but yeah, a similar thing that you can do is just use async and waits instead of our functional programming and our sort of complicated thing. Um, so yeah, this is user American dot deployed before it's getting the instance. It's calling get balance dot call and just trying to just verify it's equal to a thousand. So this compared to this looks much more simpler. So I actually prefer the second notation and out of the box um, in our project, uh, that is the notation being used. Um, so that's nice. And then yeah, this is the same thing as that really long example that I didn't go over as much. Um, it's just a lot easier to read, but you have to be careful with the asyncs. So like in before in these its, there's a string, but then there's just un, like no function over here. But in the asyncs section, you have to actually put async there instead of just nothing. Um, by that point, you can just use all these awaits. And then you can, like, this will check that the balance is two times the other balance. Um, this is still a little long, but it's all separated, so it's a little easier to read. You can just go through each line, um, and it, it will do that correctly. Um, so I ran the test. 
So it does run all these tasks, everything passed. Um, you can run a specific task if you do shuffle tasks. 